Jesus did when he showed up on the scene. The first thing he does when he shows up in your life, and he's showing up in your life right now. You know what the first thing he's doing? He's praying to his father on behalf of you. Amen. He loves us so much that he's going to, first of all, talk to his father. And here's what he's praying for. Number one, he's praying for power. He said there, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me. And I knew that thou hearest me always. But because of the people which stand by, I said it, that they may believe thou hast sent me. And when he had thus spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. Amen. Amen. So everybody write that down. Think about that just for a moment. Talking about prayer. He showed up with prayer. You and I are going to be the strongest we can be based upon how strong our prayer life Amen. is. Amen. I was so encouraged when y'all came to this altar and prayed. I'm going to give you something right here that I, I hope that you will remember. You and I, we face something in life every day. We face the enemy. Amen. And there is a power. Now listen to this. There is a power that you face that has the power to overpower you. Amen. Man. Now, I'm not trying to be fancy with words. Let me repeat that. There is a power that has the power to overpower you. But hallelujah. Hang on. Somebody's going to want to shout, get you a good toe hold this carpet. <laughs> when Jesus shows up in your life, he has the power Amen. to overpower Amen. the power Amen. that has overpowered your life Amen. all the time. Amen. He has that power. Amen. So whatever you're facing today, whatever is hindering you from coming all the way back, I've heard great testimonies about this this uh, family sitting right here. Uh, was it Richard? Yes. And uh, Christy. Christy, but the son's name. Richard, Richard Jr., right? And uh, you got a daughter that sung, that blessed our hearts. Heard a great testimony about this family. I had met them. They were just coming the last time I was here because I remember you, recognized you. And uh, they were going through some difficult times just like the rest of us the power that has the power to overpower us was overpowering them is that, is that a correct statement amen. is that a good is that all right to say that amen. Amen. amen but you know what i've heard i've heard the good or the greatest news one can hear I've heard since I was here two years ago that the one who has the power to overpower the power that was overpowering them, he showed up in their life and he said, Richard, Christy, come forth. Amen. Amen. He showed up with prayer because he prayed for that power to his Amen. father. Only God can mend lives. Only God can bring back broken homes. Only God can reach down into a addicted life, into a life that has lost it all, and say, in my face, in my presence, you can have everything back and then have it back Amen. continually. Amen. What a God we serve. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, thank you, Jesus. Man, I just feel like preaching today. Amen. 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 So he showed up with prayer. Secondly, talking about support now, Jesus, when he comes, he's going to give you support. He's going to give you prayer. And then number two, he's going to show up with pair. Amen. Pair. Let me, P-A-I-R-E-R. -E A pair of something. Are you with me? Pair. You say, well, what in the world are you talking about? <laughs> Pear. Charles Osgood, y'all remember him? Journalist, CBS commentator. Years ago would have documentaries. I was watching one day and he come on with a true story. He was interviewing two elderly ladies. Both
both of them were in the resident, a residence of the same nursing home. Both of them had suffered a severe stroke. One on the right side was paralyzed, the other lady was paralyzed on the left side. Mm. Both of those ladies were accomplished piano players, well-known piano players. But the stroke finished, of course, their piano solos and concerts. Mm. So there was a musically inclined gentleman that worked at that nursing home and uh, he come up with a brilliant idea because the people missed these two ladies playing their solos. So he took the sheet music, split it in half, put both sheets on the piano, placed both ladies on the bench. One played with her right hand, the other played with her left hand and had everybody to stay on the outside to surprise the folks. Had a concert announced, but didn't announce who was to play. And they listened from beyond the wall, and they all agreed they had never heard such sweet, perfected melody composed on a piano Amen. in their entire life. And then he allowed them to walk in, and they saw both women paralyzed, Play as if it was one. Somebody hear me now. Man. God takes your pain right. and pairs it with his power. Amen. And when the two come together, no sweeter melody under heaven Amen. than what he can do in our lives. Amen. We praise him for that. Amen. Not only does he support us with prayer, and pair, pairing up with us, because we're no match for the enemy, are we? Amen. No. Nope. Mm -hmm. We're no match for the most of the problems that we have. Many things we face are too big for us. Right. We can't solve. But number three, he is a payer. Payer, P-A-Y-E-R. He showed up and he paid Martha and Mary back. He gave them back their brother. Amen. 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 Anybody want to testify that when he showed up in your life and you were willing to receive him, that he began to pay you. Amen. Amen. He gave you a life worth living. Amen. He gave you a brand new home. Amen. He gave you brand new aspirations. He gave you a new purpose, a new life. Amen. Now you can keep plowing, looking forward, keep pitching, not looking in the rearview mirror because you know that greater is he that's in you than he that is in the world. Amen. Amen. And when we face those troubled times, we still can smile at them. Amen. To know what God's done before, he still can do again Amen. to get us through. But not only did he pay Martha and Mary, he paid Lazarus. Yes. Gave him back life. Amen. Paid him. He shows up. The first thing he does, he shouts, Lazarus, come forth. Amen. Now, why did he shout? That's the question that's often asked of me. Brother Jim, why would Jesus shout? Did he have to shout? Well, people were weeping and a lot of confusion. You know how it is. The death of a loved one. A lot of noise there in Bethany. But I don't know if that's why he shouted. But what I do know why he would have shouted is because shout in the scripture always denotes God's authority. When he shouted, even the demons tremble Amen. in Amen. his voice. That's right. When he shouts, Amen. everything else comes Amen. at peace. Right. Amen. If the Lord wills, I'm going to be preaching on that night when Jesus spoke to the sea and calmed the wind and the sea. That's a good message in that storm of life. Amen. Every miracle that Jesus did, you and I are the characters behind it. Amen. It's a message for us. Jesus shouted, Lazarus came forth. And when Lazarus came forth, hold on now, 
He was not yet complete. And that's where we conclude the message this morning. When he came forth, if you read the next scripture, he's still bound mm -hmm. with those grave clothes. Amen. That's right. He's alive, but he's still bound. Mm -hmm. You know what a miracle that was. Mm -hmm. The miracle was not so much that Jesus spoke to a dead man. That, that's good, but I did a funeral about a month ago. It was a big funeral. And uh, a nephew of the deceased uh, was a singer. And they'd asked him to sing at the funeral. He stepped down at the open casket, the head of his uncle, and uh, he began to sing, and he didn't get through the lyrics of the first verse until he choked up and he lost his composure. He, it was a soundtrack. He, he lost it. He couldn't sing. So he just turned around to me, and I'm sitting there, and I said, that's fine, brother. I knew him. I said, brother, we all understand. Mm -hmm. So they turned the soundtrack off, Gordon, over there. They did. And the nephew, the singer, looked over to his uncle lying there in the casket, and he began to speak to him. Uncle Charles said, you were my favorite, and on and on and on and on. I'm going to miss you, Uncle Charles. You're the greatest man I've ever met, apart from my dad. And so forth. That's good. But the difference is, Jesus spoke to a dead man. Uncle Charles didn't hear nephew speaking. Like, no. But Lazarus heard Amen. Jesus speaking. Amen. That's the difference. Amen. The miracle was not so much that Jesus spoke to a dead man, but a dead man heard Jesus. Yeah. And he come out of the grave. Amen. And he's still bound in those grave clothes. Right. Yep. Now, the tradition was in burial, they would wrap them with cloth from the neck down to the feet. And then they would wrap their head in a, a cloth and a napkin, they called it. And this was preparation for burial ceremonies. So when he came out, he still bound. And what did Jesus tell them? To loose him mm -hmm. and let him go. Some of you may still be bound. Though the Lord has spoken to you, though you've heard him, though you come out and got a new life in salvation, often some of us remain bound with some of those grave clothes. Amen. Grave clothes represent the traditions and the customs of the culture and of the times. A lot of folks are still bound by religion. Amen. Religion has never done anything for you. Amen. Amen. You mark that down. Amen. Only Jesus in a relationship with him has done anything Amen. for you. Amen. For me. And so the, Jesus said, loose him. Lazarus was loose. He was free. A new man. A new life. Old had passed away. Behold, all had become yeah. new. That's right. Now I want you to bow your heads just for a moment. Not only did Jesus show up with support, prayer, pair, he paired his power with their pain. And payer, he gave back life. Not only did he show up with his support, number two, Lazarus was supposed to come forth. Amen. You see, when Jesus speaks, it's going to happen. Right. Amen. You're the only one that can prevent what Jesus says from coming to fruition in your life. Amen. If you're willing, when Jesus speaks, to do what he says, it will happen. That's right. Amen. 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 You've got to be willing. I'm going to ask you to bow your heads just for a moment. I can't help but think a congregation of this number, this numerical size. We have children here. We have young moms here. We have older moms, grandmas, grandpas. We have fathers here. We have brothers, sisters. We have some maybe just come in just to visit singles but 